Hi everyone, in this video I am going to explain about the calculation of rise time and fall time in the CMOS inverter. Okay, so consider a circuit like this, a CMOS inverter where the PMOS transistor in the pull up place and NMOS transistor in the pull down place with a load capacitor CL at the output. See this is the circuit, this is the load capacitance and it is PMOS transistor and it is the NMOS transistor. So now in order to say the operation of this, explain the operation of this PMOS, uh, CMOS inverter. So if you say it is CMOS inverter with capacitor load, we can say with capacitor load. So now Initially, when input is equal to 0, the PMOS transistor is coming into on state and NMOS comes into off state so that there will be having a capacitor charging path in this way from VDD through this transistor onto the capacitor. This is during charging period. That means the capacitor initially zero, initially at a 0 potential. Now, as the current is flowing through the transistor on transistor PMOS and then to the CL, CL charges, CL charges slowly, okay. Now, during reverse operation when input is equal to 1, PMOS transistor comes into off state and MOS transistor comes into on state. So, the capacitor, whatever the charge that has been accumulated in the previous case, now has to be discharged through this on transistor of the MOS transistor, okay. So now, how to calculate the overall time delay? How many actions are there? Two, two actions are there. When PMOS transistor is in on state, capacitance CL charges. Capacitor CL charges. And NMOS transistor when it is on state, capacitor CL discharges. Capacitor CL discharges. Okay, so now during charging period, during charging period, the waveform is like, like this. During charging period, the waveform is like this and this is known as rise time TR, rise time TR. Suppose opposite is the case if you consider then again to get get back to the normal it is known as fall time tau f. Okay. So now in this video you are going to learn how to calculate this rise time and how to calculate this fall time using the parameters of this CMOS inverter. So now this is the concept related to rise time estimation. Rise time estimation. Rise time estimation is nothing but during rising period, we are going to calculate what is the time taken by the capacitor to charge up to a maximum of VDD, okay, because VDD is the input maximum. Now, as the depletion mode transistor is in on state, we are just replacing the on transistor with a constant current source and the current will be IDSP which is coming from the VDD, okay. So, this is IDSP and the input is changing from 1 to 0. Now the input is 0, that's why the transistor is in off state. Understand? So, as the input is changing from 1 to 0, the capacitor goes from on to off. That's why it is open circuited. And as the current IDSP is flowing, IDSP, P refers to the PMOS transistor. So, as IDSP is flowing, that uh, same current will also go through the CL. And CL starts charging. Capacitor starts charging. So, charging period. In this period, as the capacitor, as the capacitor charges, as the capacitor charges, the output voltage, the output voltage is V out is equal to IDSP into T by CL. IDSP is equal to T by CL. Okay, substituting this IDSP and rearranging the value. See what is IDSP where 
IDSP is equal to IDSP is equal to take the expression in terms of beta so beta by 2 into VGS minus VT whole square VGS minus VT whole square this is the formula of the drain to source current in the PMOS transistor now substitute the uh, just rearrange this equation rearrange this rearrange V out is equal to IDSP into T by CL that is equal to T is equal to CL V out divided by IDSP what is IDSP substitute that CL divided by IDSP is nothing but beta see as it is belonging to PMOS transistor take it as beta P beta P divided by 2 into VGS minus VT what about VT threshold voltage VT VGS minus VT whole square okay so now just do after doing some manipulations you will get the output uh, uh, like uh, tau is equal to 3 cl by beta p into vdd okay so at t is equal to tau r nothing but rise time when v out is equal to plus vdd so that tau r is equal to because t is equal to so tau r is equal to 2 vdd cl divided by beta p vdd minus vt whole square okay so if you substitute this uh, vt is equal to 0 0.3 vdd again uh, here it is 2 and, uh, and then it becomes simply 3 cl approximate value not exact value 3 cl beta p vdd this is rise time tau r so in the similar way we are going to calculate the fall time okay keep this in box Okay, so now fall time. Coming to the fall time estimation, as we have calculated the rise time during the capacitor charging period, in the same way we need to calculate the fall time when the capacitor discharges. When the capacitor discharges, when input is going from 0 to 1, that means the NMOS transistor should come into on state. On transistor is simply replaced by the constant current source, we know this. So, as this constant current source is there, the capacitor is having simply discharging path. This is the discharging path and the capacitor discharges. So, whatever the charge accumulated in the previous way, now it has to be discharged. How to calculate this discharging period? See, after this time, we are having this tau f, fall time. Similarly, here we have rise time. Tau R. Now consider same IDSN. Now it is belonging to the NMOS transistor, that's why it is IDSN. IDSN is equal to beta N by 2 VGS minus VT VGS minus VT whole square. VGS minus VT whole square. Okay, here T becomes threshold voltage of VT becomes threshold voltage of the NMOS transistor. Now, as the capacitor discharges again, voltage across capacitor, voltage across capacitor, V out is equal to IDSN into T by 
CL. Okay, this is the standard formula IT by C. Same, rewrite this equation. T is equal to CL V out divided by IDSN. Substitute what is IDSN? CL 2CL V out divided by beta n vgs minus vt whole square this is t now at tau is e at t is equal to tau f see what happens at t is equal to tau f output becomes simply zero okay at t is equal to tau f VGS is equal to VDD. VGS is equal to VDD. And then tau F is equal to 2 CL. This is V out. Keep it as it is. Beta N vdd minus vt so we know that vdd uh, vt is equal to 0 0.2 vdd 0 0.2 vdd then tau f is equal to approximately again it is 3 cl by beta n into vdd so here v out v out vdd v out becomes vdd vdd minus vt vt means 0 0.2 vdd so here it is square okay so vdd minus 0 0.2 vdd 0 0.8 vdd square 0 0.8 is under square so this vdd this vdd cancel and one vdd left in the denominator so after simplification 2 by 0 0.16 it's simply uh, just approximately equal to 3 okay so we are having this as tau now take the ratio of ratio of rise time to the fall time rise time to the fall time that is equal to tau r by tau f is equal to 3 cl by beta p into vdd into beta n vdd by 3 cl so that is equal to beta n by beta p this is the relation between tau r and tau f this is the relation between tau r and tau f which is the ratio of beta n by beta p we know mu n is equal to 2.5 times mu p okay mobility of electrons is equal to 2.5 times mobility of holes similarly similarly beta n is equal to 2.5 times beta p if you substitute this therefore tau r by tau f is equal to beta n by beta p 2.5 beta p by beta p that is equal to 2.5 that means what we can write tau r is equal to 2.5 times tau f tau r is equal to 2.5 times tau f according to this relation can you tell me which is the highest period tau r or tau f that means which is faster rise time is faster or fall time is faster rise time is faster it is 2.5 times fall time okay rise time is faster that means capacitor takes a very less time to charge and tau f is nothing but very low okay so we can observe three different points here so observations on this rise time and fall time so first one rise time and fall time 
are proportional to rise time and fall time are proportional to 1 by VDD. If you observe both the expressions, they are proportional to 1 by VDD. Again, rise time and fall time are proportional to CL, load capacitance. That means as the load capacitance value increases, this rise time and fall time increases. If it decreases, they also decrease. And last point, tau r is equal to 2.5 times tau f for equal N and P transistor geometries. Transistor geometries. Okay. This is about the estimation of rise time and fall time in the CMOS inverter. Thank you.